I'm going to present uh, uh, four cases. Uh, I will not uh, dig as I'm not a specialist. You have had just a specialist, this is Pancho Lernur, specialist in history of architecture and critic of architecture. Uh, but I would like to present the issues related the, with the appraisal and preservation of four iconic, for sure, maybe Pancho would say if canonic or not, <laughs> and which of, of these four houses should uh, have this, uh, this denomination. Uh, the one is the Ocampo house that Natasha visited and we met there. Excuse me? The pointer? No, I can, well, the pointer, where is it? This is a pointer? Yeah. Yeah. No? No, don't worry. Okay, okay. okay. Well, the Ocampo house, the Casa Jan in La Falda, that is, uh, is, uh, uh, is part of uh, a series of houses of uh, uh, an experiment of uh, uh, Vladimiro Acosta, uh, a Russian architect that came to Argentina, uh, the Casa del Puente in Mar de Plata, and the Casa Curuchet. Chronologically, this is the, the series. First of all, we have the Casa Curuchet, uh, as it was said, it was uh, Le Corbusier, and I suggest you to read uh, Pancho Lierno's uh, uh, book. I don't know if it's translated in English, that's the problem. MoMA should translate all this into English. Um, uh, about the, the Le Corbusier trajectory in South America, particularly in Argentina, and the different groups, and what uh, was uh, his last chance to build and he finally did it, uh, a building in the whole Americas. The other one is a carpenter center at Harvard. Uh, well, this house was, uh, the client was a, a, a physician, a surgeon, who was very interested in designing new tools for uh, chirurgy, and he was very interested in, in how uh, the physicians and and uh, you know the equipment of the physician should be redesigned. He was much interested in the design and, and the space. He he was original from La Plata. La Plata is a city 50 kilometers from Buenos Aires that was founded in 1880. And the the exercise that was uh, uh, completed by Le Corbusier is a, a real uh, interesting house uh, that is a master masterpiece of infilling in the uh, network of diagonals and orthogonal uh, street of the city of uh, La Plata. Uh, Le Corbusier was reconsidering the design of the villas at that time. Uh, he, was, he was very much involved in great urbanist projects, uh, city planning and his great uh, uh, projects uh, just after the, the Second World War. But he, uh, well, designed the, the building and it was, uh, it was constructed. Uh, there were three or four directors of the construction. The first one was uh, Mancio Williams and, well, with Dr. Curuchet and one of the often crisis, uh, economic crisis of Argentina, around 49, 50. Uh, the house was finally uh, inaugurated in 1955. Uh, and as you see, there are some of uh, the uh, ideas or the experiments, previous experiments that Le Corbusier have had in terms of the domino or some houses and villas he designed or he built or were only reminded in paper. Uh, the house was completed. Dr. Curuchet uh, lived for a few years there. Uh, the, ca the house was very much appreciated by the Argentine architectural milieu. It was a sort of uh, uh, showcase of uh, Le Corbusier actual work, uh, an actual space, not in Buenos Aires, in, a, in La Plata. It was uh, uh, the capital city of the province of Buenos Aires. It's a sort of provincial town, although very uh, important in terms of uh, 
of uh, building of the late 19th century uh, period. The house, uh, uh, well, is uh, still in the hands of the descendants of, uh, of uh, Dr. Le Curuchet. Uh, it is managed by the Society of Architects of the province of Buenos Aires. It underwent uh, restoration in the late 1880s, early 1990s. Uh, and uh, it's very interesting. There is a lot of uh, literature about this, uh, about this building. Uh, it has been uh, uh, quite well preserved. And as a result, it's, uh, it has been uh, used for different uh, events and cultural events and even uh, movies were turned in this, uh, in this house. It was, uh, it has been appraised from the very beginning. There's no way uh, of uh, not having uh, the Casa Curuchet as a landmark in the city of La Plata at a national level, but also at, uh, at an international level. You see that is the, as I said, this was a very interesting exercise of infill, very carefully planned by Le Corbusier. This is the typical houses of the foundation of the city La Plata, late 19th century, built on the you know, municipal line. We have uh, a courtyard inside and all the language of classicism by Italian builders. And on this side, a sort of uh, late Art Deco house with a garden on the front. And you see how Le Corbusier play the program of the, here is, this is a very small a plot, um, a small house with the uh, office of the doctor on this, on this first floor, the garage and services, and then the house itself in connection with the, the, the house of the left, while all the, the balconies and the terraces and the baldachin is, uh, the canopy is on the side of the old, uh, old, the old house. Well, all this uh, recognition and efforts to preserve the building had uh, resulted into the incorporation into the World Heritage List uh, two years ago, as part of some 17 other works of Le Corbusier. It's a system of, of buildings of, uh, of a famous architect, of the, one of the most famous architects in the, in the 20th century. It's quite unique among UNESCO to put together a system of building in different parts of the world of a single uh, single designer, single artist or architect, but uh, well, it was incorporated and celebrated two years ago in Argentina. Argentina has very few uh, entrance or inclusions in the World Heritage List. This is from the pre-Columbian period and colonial sites and has this only piece of 20th century architecture uh, incorporated into the World Heritage List. Uh, in Latin America, before Argentina, Brazil with Brasilia in 1986, and then Venezuela and Mexico have incorporated uh, other landmarks, modern, modern movement uh, landmarks in, into the World Heritage List. The second example is the Casa Sobre el Arroyo, or Casa del Puente, house over the creek, uh, or the bridge house by Amancio Williams. For sure, um, uh, a lot of you no, this building has been portrayed uh, in uh, magazines, in books, uh, has been uh, now in the internet, uh, is uh, very famous. It's also very famous because Amancio Williams, who was an architect who wanted to study and started to study also engineering, uh, was in charge of uh, was the project uh, and the project for his own father, for his family. It's one of the, it's the most important work he, he built. Uh, Amancio William prepared um, different uh, projects uh, from a skyscraper in the early 40s for Buenos Aires, for plan for the city uh, or city in the Antarctica, or the plan for a city that humanity needs. He was very <laughs> selfish and proud of himself. Uh, and this house is 400 kilometers from Buenos Aires in a summer resort. Uh, this, uh, the plot is not near the beach, it's some one kilometer from the beach. It's two hectares uh, with a small creek, uh, and, and the house is, uh, is quite unique uh, in terms of uh, what uh, uh, 
the building has as a previous antecedent, you know, I don't know, and Pancho may agree, that uh, uh, it's it, it, it a mix of uh, reinforced concrete structure and metal structure. In this case, what you have here is the arch of uh, reinforced concrete and the slab, but then you have metal columns and the roof is also of a metal. Uh, this is quite uh, unusual for construction in Argentina since uh, Argentina built all the most important buildings in the late 19th century with uh, metal structure uh, produced in Europe or in the United States. Uh, Argentina has no iron, no coal, as Brazil or the United States or Europe. Uh, and uh, around 1920, it was the end of the metal structure construction in Argentina. Uh, iron uh, reinforced concrete started very early, around 1900. The first construction and the first experiments of three different schools, the French, the German, and the Italian. And finally, the German won the battle about among the, the different schools for they have systematized the, uh, all the calculations on they have uh, produced manuals and there were many uh, German contractors that have firms or branches in, in Buenos Aires with uh, German engineers. So this is a, a very unusual, this is an exceptional case. Uh, as you see, the plan also is, uh, is very sophisticated. One thing that impressed me, I, I, I knew the house a few years ago while coming inside. You'll see some, some images. Uh, the Amancio Williams was very much concerned about the perfectionism and the, 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 the millimeter of the calculations and the, the construction of the building. Uh, what, is, what is very important in this building is, is the beam that uh, crosses the whole uh, the whole area of the of the creek, and this uh, the dimension of uh, of, of that beam uh, uh, was was the key element to uh, define the space inside the whole area, not only of the of the bedrooms but also on this side, this long living room and music room for his father, who was a, who was a pianist. And inside, you see this, uh, this beam uh, arrange all the space and the, the, the height of uh, you know, the, the windows. The windows are rather high in comparison with the furniture. Furniture need to be rather high, not to be seated and not to have uh, uh, the interference of, of, of the beam, of the highness of the beam. What you see here is uh, uh, there was a fire and there was a dilapidation of, uh, of, the, of the house in 2004 and 2008. Uh, the house is currently owned by the municipal government of the city of, of Mar del Plata. There have been attempts to restore part of it. They have uh, only remade the, the windows. You have seen a previous picture that the windows burned and they were, they were destroyed. As you see here, this one, it was like that. Little by little, they are raising some money and uh, although a, a national landmark, uh, it is very difficult to raise money at the public level to uh, restore this, uh, this building. Uh, there has been completed a, a project for the restoration with all the specification and the details, following all the drawings and specifications that uh, the William Archive has in place. Amancio Williams, one of his, his sons, uh, had assembled and has kept all the Williams archives. And uh, well, uh, in the, in the project, in the designing the, the project of the restoration, there are several questions that have not been solved yet in the way of uh, if uh, it is uh, uh, natural to, to keep part of, of, uh, of uh, the surviving floors or the surviving, uh, you know, finishings in some cases or to redo everything as uh, it was planned and is documented by Amancio Williams' 
uh, documents, no? From the roof to the staircases to the interior divisions, finishings, and even the furniture and the lighting and all the different equipment inside the, inside the house. Uh, what uh, is also a, a challenge is uh, how to deal with the restoration of the outside because it's reinforced concrete exposed and uh, has the, uh, a reinforced concrete exposed that has had uh, a treatment uh, called uh, the hammer uh, uh, reinforced concrete. So you have this, all the, the signals of the, the stone and the cement, but there are crackings and the reinforcements to be, to be repaired. Fortunately, there is all the, the documents about even the, the reinforced concrete structure. And I, I, I want to say that uh, the, the house uh, represents, in, in the way of restoring the reinforced concrete structure, uh, a very important tradition, as we, we, we have seen also in the, in the house of Le Corbusier, but in that case it was painted because uh, Le Corbusier wanted the reinforced concrete to be painted finally. The reinforced concrete, as I said, it was a very important tradition in Argentina, starting from a new tradition, because it was a recent, a very innovative uh, technique in uh, in 1900s. Uh, uh, as you see, these are some of the examples, and the way the reinforced concrete was treated by very able masons, of Italian masons that came to Argentina, they were able to produce uh, forms in a way that uh, is like uh, uh, cabinet, uh, wood cabinet makers instead of, uh, of uh, masons, you know. And this was part of uh, the tradition of the immigration masons and uh, the conjunction, a special conjunction of uh, this, uh, uh, this labor together with the uh, need for the use of uh, and the, the, the success of reinforced concrete that produced these uh, houses, these modern houses, most of them made of, but not the, the ox that you have presented, but most of the iconic houses of the modern architecture of Argentina are made of uh, reinforced concrete. Because Argentina has a tradition of uh, reinforced concrete from 1900s, as I said, and the three most uh, uh, important or most or tallest structure for reinforced concrete in the world were built that were built in the 1910s, 1920s, and 1930s were built in Buenos Aires. Uh, one, the one is the Galeria Güemes of 1915, designed by an Italian architect, and uh, the reinforced concrete structure uh, designed and, and calculated by the Philip Holtzman, a, a, a German firm. Then the Palacio Barolo, the, the firm the contractor and the structural firm was Italian, and finally the Kavanagh building in the, in the 30s. So uh, when we consider this, uh, this uh, heritage, it's not because it's an icon iconic houses, at least as we see it uh, nowadays from the National Commission of Monuments, but it's part of a set of pieces of uh, uh, modern architecture and reinforced concrete structures that is very important for the heritage of the country. Uh, this heritage of, uh, of uh, reinforced concrete that finish sort of a climax uh, in the structures of the late 1930s and the first half of the 1940s, where nothing at all was built in the entire world, by in the, but in the Latin American countries, there were experiments, not only uh, aesthetic experiments, but also technical experiments as those were uh, done by German engineers in the case of the Banco Nacion, a classical outside of the facade, but the structure really a, a, a turning point in the history of, of structure of rainforest concrete, or the Casino and Hotel Provincial de Mar del Plata. The third house is the Casa Jan. It's uh, uh, maybe a type for a canon or a or, or an icon for, for the development of a type. Uh, the, the author is uh, Vladimir Acosta. He was Russian. He studied in Italy and then he studied in, in Germany and he came to Argentina in 1928. And he developed a system called the Helios system, 
This is the analysis. He studied the latitude and the altitude and uh, the meteorology and the climatology. Uh, it was uh, a, a sort of descendants of hygienism of late 19th century and early 20th century. And he developed a system that, uh, well, with all the studies, that he applied in, in several projects with all these shades and this, uh, what uh, Le Corbusier called brisolet, but they were not elemented added, but it was part of the volumes and the structure and the spaces of the, of the houses. Uh, some of them are, the, he built uh, six of them, uh, two of them are in very good shape, this one, the one I, I, I showed in Cordoba, and this is in Bahia Blanca, they are thousand kilometers one from the other, and he applied the, the same system for both of them. These houses are very livable, contrarily to what we have seen, there is no air conditioning, uh, these are houses from the 1940s that we have seen here in the United States, air conditioning was the rule. Well, Vladimir Acosta developed uh, his project into uh, housing projects. Uh, he built this, uh, this high-rise building in Palermo, applying the same, the same principles. And also, previously, in the 30s, he had developed uh, monoblocks and uh, designing and applying some of the ideas of Europe uh, that were having architects and urbanists in Europe to the actual city of uh, Buenos Aires. And for the few minutes I have, I would like to show the, the, the first modern house of uh, Argentina. It was, uh, uh, the client was Victorio Campo, the designer, and the builder was Victorio Campo. She has previously prepared a project and, and, and built uh, with a, a local contractor in Mar del Plata, another, uh, the first modern house of Argentina in 1927. Uh, it was inspired by all the, the different proposals of the avant-garde like Milet Stevens, the Villa Heim, previous to, to build or to decide the, the building of uh, this modern house. Victorio Campo was a member of the, the prominent uh, society and the uh, very wealthy families of, uh, and traditional families of Argentina. She was a transgressor, she was a sort of feminist of her time. She uh, headed uh, uh, groups of uh, intellectuals and assembled writers and she was herself a patron of uh, literature, music and architecture. And uh, this is very important because as uh, it has happened in Europe, or as it has happened uh, here in the States, the uh, strongest connection with, with, uh, of the avant-garde were between literature and architecture, instead of, uh, um, you know, fine arts and architecture. Uh, she assembled the most important uh, writers uh, of the avant-garde, and he decided to have a manifesto of, uh, of, his, uh, of her will, and also, uh, so she asked for a project to Le Corbusier, uh, of Le Corbusier in 1928, but all of a sudden Le Corbusier produced that. She was aware of what was going on in the avant-garde in Paris because of her friends. So Le Corbusier proposed uh, a project uh, that he designed very quickly, but uh, uh, all of a sudden she shifted and asked a classicist architect, Alejandro Bustillo, who was doing this kind of buildings at that time. A classicist to design her house. There were many, many discussions, even tricks of Bustillo. Uh, so they, they finally, she won, and Bustillo produced a, a, a house that was inspired by the Villa Heim, the Gebrekian, with a cubist garden. Also by Gebrekian, you see a model of the Villa here. The building, uh, she lived there for, for some 12 years. Then she moved to another house, uh, the house of the family, the house of Buenos Aires. The house was occupied by two or three different uh, uh, owners, even the, the current president of Argentina, Mauricio Macri, lived there for five years. Uh, he destroyed part of uh, the house, unfortunately. And then the National Endowment for the Arts uh, uh, purchased it in 2000. 
and they decided to restore only the exterior as an icon of uh, modern architecture and an icon in the middle of uh, uh, um, a district that was originally from 19-teens and 1920s with all eclectic and academic architecture. Uh, for the last two years, the National Endowment of the Arts uh, put together a restoration project that is completed in the way of uh, having restored the exteriors and the interiors. And uh, we are trying to assemble uh, similar furniture to what, uh, what she, she had there. Because the, the interior design, the interior architecture of this uh, house is even more important than the exterior that was uh, an inspiration, got inspiration from different projects of, uh, of avant-garde architects in France, especially. Uh, as you see, some original pictures and little by little the assembling of part of the furniture of, of the house. It's important to know because sometimes we consider we appraise these modern houses not uh, in the way uh, of uh, you know the culture of uh, modernity in uh, in a region in a city or in a country. Uh, for Victoria Campo, she was part of uh, a cultural elite of the South American that usually went to Europe, was based in Paris. And they were very aware of what was, was happening with the avant-garde in Europe, especially in Paris. But uh, uh, they have certain sense of, uh, let's say, certain nomadism. So not to fix the interiors, not to have uh, all the, mm, the furniture, the furnishing design by the, by the architect, but they by themselves arrange the decoration. As uh, other... Uh, other uh, famous clients of uh, Le Corbusier, for instance, in, in here is uh, the Stein de Monsi, this is uh, the Ville Savoie, and this is Maison La Roche, decided to intervene inside. With the result that, in the case of the Ville Savoie and the uh, Villa Stein, Le Corbusier rejected completely what the Steins, the old Steins, and uh, Madame Savoie had done with his interiors, with the furniture. On the contrary, Le Corbusier, in his prologue of Precision, the, the book uh, that assembles all his lectures in South America, Le Corbusier arrived in, in October 1929 and was received by Victorio Campo, who was one of the members of the committee that invited him to give these lectures in Buenos Aires. And when back uh, to Europe, he wrote Precisions, he put together Precisions, and the, uh, uh, the prologue, he said, that uh, the, the big, uh, the first step in Buenos Aires have been done by Victorio Campo. And he had seen uh, Picasso Saint Leger in the context of a purity that had never seen in other houses, modern houses. Because the Picasso and Leger were not on the walls, but they were tapestries on the floors. Uh, you see, uh, and even it's interesting because uh, uh, this nomadic way of uh, uh, designing, yes? Yeah, yeah, I'm finishing, I'm finishing. <laughs> Okay. Uh, we are done. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, to finalize, uh, in some cases, uh, these houses, so these pieces of modern architecture, are a, a piece in a chain. In the case of Victoria Campos, she was born and raised during the Victorian era, uh, as many of uh, other people and other. Uh, protagonist of the 20th century culture and architecture. Uh, he headed the revolution and the avant-garde in Argentina, for instance. And in the 1940s, she came back. She sold her modern house. She came back to a Victorian house. She painted off, all of white. And she mixed uh, uh, modern furniture with traditional uh, furniture. That is the postmodern style that will reign in the, in the rest of, uh, of the of the second half of the 20th century. And it's also a very important place for the founding of the most important uh, literature review of uh, South America, the, the house. So instead of concentrating always on the architectural values, iconic or canonic, we have to dig into the cultural connections, the cultural uh, importance of these uh, houses. Thank you.